Hello. In this video, I am going to explain how to implement a well-known technique for obstacle avoidance known as potential fields in the Copelisim software or PREP. So, these presentations have several objectives. Obviously, the main objective is to know how to implement potential fields technique in Copelisim using specific uh, method which is known as gradient descent approach. So, in addition to this, I will also show some cases where the technique fails to accomplish its task due to local minima issues. So, the idea is to use a laser ranger finder sensor to avoid obstacles in real time. I will show how to reach a fixed goal and also how to follow a dynamic target. Both cases implemented exactly the same technique. In the video description, I have included a link with a file in order to implement this activity. It consists of an environment in which a robot must try to reach a fixed goal, in this case, a red flag. Depending where the red flag is placed, you can find situations in which the robot will reach its goal, but there might be other cases in which the robot is trapped in a local minima, as you can see in the third example. I encourage you that once it works for you in a simple scenario, try to solve more difficult scenarios like the ones shown. Also, I have left another link to a file with the purpose of showing how this type of algorithm behaves when following a dynamic target, moving around the environment and changing its position over time. Specifically, I have used an agent included in Copelisim software named as Bill, so the, ro the robot will try to follow him. You can try first with a, an empty environment, and then also you can try a situation full of people or another including obstacles as shown. So now you know what it can be done, I'm going to explain how to achieve that. So we need to start by preparing the simulation as a scene. So we need to create a dummy that will be a child of the robot pioneer P3DX. And it must be aligned with the wheel axis and also the x, y, and z axis of the dummy must be pointing as indicated in the figure. So the x axis is pointing forward. To access to the robot position, we will implement the simple code. On the right hand, we will access to the handle of the object that we have previously created, and we will create a post variable with the current robot configuration at the initialization section of the program. This variable will also be updated in the syscall sensing function by calling the update robot pose function. As you can see, this function returns a vector with the position x, y, and the robot orientation, later needed in some of the functions to be implemented. In addition to this, uh, we will add a Hercuyo URG 0xLX laser sensor. You will find this sensor inside the sensors category in Copelisim uh, model browser. Note that there are three different models for the same sensor, and I have used the second one. So once you add it to the scene, the sensor appears as Fast Hokuyo in its name. So you must place this sensor just above the robot, also aligned with the wheel axis, and make it child of the robot too. Also take into account that the sensor orientation must cover the front side of the robot, as shown in the figure. So in order to access to the laser sensor data, we need to implement the get measure data function in the code script associated with the laser sensor. This is a function that simply returns an internal variable with the x, y, and z points of the laser. So once we have this function, we need to implement also another function that I named get laser points, and this function must be implemented inside the robot script code. This function indeed calls the other function, so it calls the get measure data function to obtain laser data, but since they are in separate code snippets, we must use the call script function uh, function in order to, uh, to get that uh, information and this is part of the Copelia Sim API. Please note that the get laser points function returns a list with the x and y coordinates of, uh, of the laser points relative to the uh, sensor position. So 
The potential fields technique has been explained already in a previous video and I'm including in the video description a link to that video I'm, I have just mentioned just in case you don't know this technique. So if, if that's the case, I recommend you to watch the previous video. But here I will just make a brief summary so you can know how to implement this technique. This technique basically defines two potential functions, one attractive and another one which is a repulsive function. The attractive pot potential function combines a parabolic and a conic function. The value of the function basically depends on the distance between the position of the robot and the goal. So it doesn't matter if it's a fixed goal or a dynamic target. The formula is the same. It just simply changes the, the information, the variables. In fact, you don't need to implement the potential function. You must implement its gradient. The gradient is a two-dimensional function in this case that returns a vector, one with a x-coordinate value and another one with a y-coordinate value. The attractive force function shown returns the attractive force so that the robot is attracted towards the goal. This force is actually the negative or the, uh, the negative gradient, so don't forget to change the sign of the gradient function for its correct implementation. As you can see, I have included a snippet of the code you need to implement, but the formula implementation is still missing, so that's that's your task. The parameters epsilon p and c are <clears throat> must be sorry uh, properly adjusted. To avoid obstacles, we need to implement re the repulsive uh, potential function that depends on the distance uh, to the obstacles. And therefore, in this case, uh, we get those distance from the laser sensor, which returns a list with x and y coordinates of all detected points uh, as a set of laser beams. And uh, we can compute the distance uh, to each of the obstacles just simply by computing the variable d sub i on the formula. The repulsive potential is affected to the robot only if the obstacle lies between an influence distance and a safe distance, defined by the parameters qinf and qmin, respectively. Note that both the repulsive potential and its gradient include a summation term, which means that all laser beams must be taken into account. The repulsive force function returns the repulsive force relative to the robot position, so your task is to complete a missing part of the code that re and return the repulsive force. So you should provide values for the influence and sa safety distance parameters as well as the repulsive constant. Indeed, this is one of the most critical parameters, and if it's too large, the robot will be highly affected by obstacles while if it's too small, the robot will collide against obstacles. Once the attractive and repulsive forces have been obtained, we must combine them and apply the kinematic control law that allows us to safely guide the robot towards the goal. Here I propose to use some kinematic expressions that I also explained in a previous video. I'm, I am including this link on, uh, in the video description also just in case you missed it. Uh, it's a very simple kinematic controller that computes the angular wheel speeds and um, in this case the x, y and theta position of the robot uh, will be obtained from the robot pose and the attractive and the repulsive first, uh, force vectors will be obtained from the previous uh, uh, function described. The parameter p is known as the wheelbase and uh, it's a distance fr uh, from the wheels to the robot center while parameter r is the radius of the wheels and parameter b ref is uh, the reference velocity and parameter e allows to regulate or uh, is a distance uh, for the off uh, off kinematic control that allows you to uh, or affects to the control law okay so in case uh, you don't have or you don't know how to adjust these parameters i suggest to to watch the video i have just mentioned before and the last function to implement is just a function that combines everything. So in this in this case, um, you need to or it needs to return the wheel speeds based on the robot position, the attractive and the repulsive force, based on the previous slide. Just implement the, the, the formulas on the previous slide. 
So in this video, I have explained how to implement the potential fields in Copelis in VREP. In the following video, I will show how this works in two different scenarios. Thank you very much.